What's up guys? I thought I'd just come on here and do a little video about um, the things that I use for oil painting. Um, I do a wet on wet technique um, like Bob Ross. I learned a lot from following along with his videos and so I'm just going to describe what kind of things that I use in order to do that. Um, somebody uh, asked me for advice today, so I made a video earlier. This one is intended to be a little more, uh, well, anyway, just better than the first one. So um, here we go, and I'll guide you through all of the things that I use and, and my advice. Um, so yeah. First of all, I would like to say that I am not a professional. Um, I, I have been painting a lot, but I, I don't consider myself an expert. I'm still learning, and everything that I'm going to share with you today is just what has worked for me in the past. So I don't have a lot of uh, experience with lots of different types of oil paints. I've only used a small few since I began to paint with oil. Um, so as far as what oil paint you should buy, I don't really have solid advice. Um, right, right now I currently use um, the Bob Ross brand that was gifted to me and it works really well. Um, you can just choose any oil paint that you want, especially if you're just starting out. Um, but one thing that I do know is a good thing to look for with oil paint is if you open up the cap and you squeeze it and it stands up like that. That That is a very firm paint and that will do a very good job for you uh, with your paintings. So no matter what brand it is, if you squeeze it and it stands up like that, then that'll work. One thing that I will say is if you are following along with say Bob Ross, I would definitely look for specific colors. Um, if you watch a lot of Bob Ross's later videos, he will have the complete uh, colors that he uses on the screen. And those colors will you can really do just about anything with, so I recommend finding those colors. The next thing I recommend uh, is paint thinner. Um, I use an odorless paint thinner. It's called Turpinoid, and it is a turpentine substitute. This does not smell as much, and and it's really easy to work with, and it does the job pretty well. One thing that I really recommend when, when using this odorless paint thinner is to recycle it. It is so easy to recycle. There are plenty of videos online about how to do that, but it's, it's very easy. After you're done using your paint thinner, after you're done painting, you just, you just put that, that used paint thinner into a jar like this. And after a while, a few days, um, it will separate and you can see how it's like kind of gray green down here and sort of orange on top. And that orange stuff is good to be used again. So you just pour that orange stuff into a, a fresh bottle. Here I have my bottle, kind of fresh. This is where I put my recycled uh, paint thinner. And you can keep using it over and over and over again. And this is really good because you should not be pouring paint thinner down a drain. It is bad for plumbing and it's bad for the environment and it's just not good. And while you're painting, it's nice to have a fairly big jar uh, to clean your brushes in because as Bob will say, you're going to beat the devil out of it after you, after, <laughs> when you're ready to remove the paint from your brush. So having this big jar helps you from keeping a mess all around. And I only, <laughs> I only put in like this much at a time every time I paint, and that just does the job really, really well. And having that jar uh, is perfect. One thing that I highly recommend you do is prime the canvas. See, I have a canvas here, and it is 
unwrapped or not unwrapped I haven't even used it yet and uh, the best thing you can do is prime this with acrylic paint now you'll hear from a lot of different artists to use a primer or gesso or something uh, before you use it but you do not need all of that expensive stuff and you don't have to use a tube of, of um, acrylic instead you can pick up some ordinary acrylic based house paint and this stuff is thin and it will spread very far and it will do the job so you put this on your canvas you put about two coats and you let it dry in between and that helps the canvas uh, become not so porous and it will help your paint go on really very smoothly as far as canvases go, I really uh, like stretched canvas the most. It has the best texture. I especially like it when it's like double supported like this. If you see canvases that are double supported, then you know it's not going to fall apart and bend and break. However, I don't always use these because, <laughs> believe it or not, stretched canvas takes up a whole ton of space. So. Instead, I will buy flat boards, which are a lot cheaper and a lot easier to store. And while the texture isn't, isn't as nice, it still does the job. Just make sure that you do the same thing and prime it before. Um, this is an, actually an acrylic painting by my son. So one of the rules that I would say is really key to wet on wet painting with oil is that a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. In other words, your first layers of paint will be very thick, you know, straight out of the bottle onto the canvas. And then all the paint that you're going to be layering on top of that needs to be thinned out in order to stick. And to do this, there are several different ways to thin your paint. The first thing you can do is use that same odorless paint thinner to thin your paint a little bit. Now, I don't really do this because I found that the other things work better, but if you don't have anything else, that will work just fine. Um, the second thing that I like to use is um, a bottle of linseed oil. And that's just an oil that will dilute your paint and make it thinner in order for it to stick on your thick paint, on the background paint. Um, but lately what I've been using is what Bob Ross likes to call uh, liquid white or magic white. And I have a little container and this is pretty much just, just thin uh, oil paint and you can get it in white, you can get it in black, and you can get it in clear. Now I use clear, no sorry, I use white most of the time because it doesn't really add a whole lot of lightness to your paint. It does a little bit but not a whole ton so it's not going to ruin your color but it's going to thin your paint out enough to stick on top of what you want and usually if you are going to put be putting stuff on top, it would be a highlight and not a shadow. But I do know that all that stuff might be hard to find and also a little expensive because number one, they, they uh, don't make Bob Ross brand anymore. And number two, uh, you know, other things are more easily available. Linseed oil is, can be bought anywhere, so. All right, now let's go to the brushes. Brushes are so important when you're painting, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so what I do for my brushes is I buy some cheap ass brushes. And I am not kidding you when I say that. Like, I go to the hardware store or I go to Walmart or wherever and I buy these giant packs of these brushes, okay? And I use these four sizes of brushes for all of my paintings and they work marvelously. They are not expensive, they're easy to get and they come with a ton and I love using a ton of brushes so I don't have to keep rinsing all the time when I'm painting. 
the one thing that you want to make sure is that your brushes are natural bristle brushes you do not want them to be synthetic for number one it will hold your paint better it will give it a better texture in your painting and it won't be uh your brushes won't be ruined by the odorless turpentine turpenoid <laughs> so these i highly recommend for all of your paintings especially if you're following along to bob ross they might not look like it but these can make the tiniest details that that are so beautiful and you would have never guessed also you will need a fan brush bob ross uses fan brushes in almost every single one of his paintings and they are very important it is good to make sure that these are also natural bris bris bristle brushes and that um and that they're just nice like this i never really pay attention to the size of these brushes this brush happens to be a number six brush it's probably the size that i use most often but like i said i don't pay attention to that i just use what works Finally, when it comes to brushes, you will want a liner brush. Now this liner brush is synthetic and that's okay because it does the job. It is good for small little like lining details, um, but I actually only use this at, at the end when I sign my name on the canvas. Um, so yeah, this works just great. Finally, my favorite tool is the palette knife. This is a palette knife and Bob uses this in all of his paintings. And let me tell you what, it is awesome. You can make mountains with this. You can make tree trunks with this, water, rocks, endless. You can paint a whole painting with this if you really wanted to. But let me tell you, this is the right shape this is the shape that you want they they come in oh hello they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes but this shape will do all the jobs that you need it to do um, this particular one is metal which is really good for wiping clean very easy um, very sharp like that sharp edge will really do you a lot of good and uh, it is the artist love brand I don't care what brand this is, I just know that it works. I only really pay attention to brand in things like uh, turpenoid or paint, depending. Um, but though that works just beautifully in all my paintings. In fact, this, this made those mountains up there. Only this, no brushes, just this. Amazing. The next thing you're gonna want is something to put your canvas on so it is upright. Um, it's not entirely necessary, but I find when you're painting with using these techniques, it's just easier if it's upright. And, and easels are pretty easy to come by. I do use a very large and tall easel that makes takes up a lot of space but I also have this small tabletop easel and I don't think it was too expensive the nice thing about this easel is that it has this square bottom and that gives you a whole lot of stability when you're trying to pound on your canvas when you're really working in the paint so picking up one of those is definitely a really good idea okay so for my palette I use this thing and it looks dirty but fear not because every time I paint I line this palette with foil and I put my paint on that oil I mix them I'm on the foil I mix on the foil and it is fantastic I have cleaned way too many palettes <laughs> in my time and let me tell you what it is so wonderful to just take the foil off and throw it away I do not have to do any cleanup work with palettes 
and that is the way I like to keep it. This palette actually comes with a lid so that if I want to save the paint that I'm working with, I can do that. I almost never do that, and that's because I, I like to paint all in one go. It's part of wet on wet technique, and it's just my style. I like to get it done and over with. Finally, a um, few things. Uh, as for uh, extra stuff in a tire, I, uh, I wear this giant lab coat because I am a very messy person. I also put a towel over my lap that helps me uh, rub my brushes, dry them off, and I also use a washcloth to help clean my brushes as well. And um, because I am so messy and I don't like a lot of cleaning, I wear rubber gloves, latex gloves or whatever, to cover my hands while I paint. This is a good idea because um, if you get the paint thinner on your hands, it will dry your hands out so, 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 so much. And... It doesn't feel good so wearing gloves is actually a really good idea and my last piece of advice is totally unnecessary but I do it because I really really like it what I do is I take masking tape or painters tape and I put it on the edges of my canvas and the reason I do that is because when I take the tape off at the end, it gives me a really, really clean edge and it frames it and makes it look just a little bit more professional. That tiny touch will knock your painting out of the park and people will say, wow, that looks super good. <laughs> you are definitely going to like hearing that after you have frame your canvas without actually framing. But most of all, just remember to have fun. I mean, it does not matter what your painting looks like at the end. No one is gonna see all of the flaws that you see and you might actually impress a lot of people just by doing it. It's all about having fun and about practicing and I will say that techniques take time to work on. I still have a lot of trouble putting wet paint over wet paint without mixing mud. And I'm still working on it. <laughs> so hang in there and have fun and do yourself a favor and have a hobby for this quarantine. Since we're all stuck at home, we might as well be painting or sewing or writing or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I just made this video for fun, but if anybody has any questions or you need more advice, feel free to contact me. I don't work uh, and I'm home most of the day, so <laughs> if you if you want some ideas or even even about other kinds of art projects, I have done it all. So just drop me a line. See ya. <laughs>